make it through the, the parking lot changes? Everybody park at McDonald's? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. You guys are so amazing. Thank you for doing that.
for communion. What I want you to do, we're going to do it a little differently. So we're not going to give the command to you, we're not tell you at any point in time when to take communion, okay? So the, the cracker and the juice are coming, and as you feel led to take communion, take communion, okay?
never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. I trust you. I trust you.
gifts, no power, no wisdom. generosity and we have an amazing video that is going to show us a little bit about what's been happening this last week let's watch next year every square inch of this campus will be transformed we're going to add 100 plus new parking spaces to our campus New youth space in our gym. It's going to be turned from a gymnasium to a 300 seat auditorium for our junior hires and our high school. We're going to have a brand new children's facility from nursery all the way through fifth grade. New community space with Brush Fire Restaurant opening up on our campus. This whole place is going to be transformed. So excited about what God is doing. And the reason we're excited is we believe deep in our hearts that it's worth it. Because it's worth it. Let's give a clap. That's amazing. We're so excited. And let's have the ushers come down. And if you bow your heads with me, let's thank the Father for what he's accomplishing among us. Lord, we are so grateful for all that you have done in each of our lives individually, but also for all of us as a family. Thank you for the way you've provided and for the actual action that's happening on campus with the construction happening and with a clear vision of what we're accomplishing together for the kingdom of God. We're so grateful for this. So bless all these funds that are given so generously. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you are new, please fill out the guest card attached to your bulletin and bring it to the Information Center in the lobby. We would love to connect with you and help you explore the exciting things available to you and your family. Pure Heart is a place where you are encouraged to come authentically as you are, experience healing and growth, and discover meaning and purpose through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Pure Heart is a family of Christ followers committed to making disciples who love God and love others. We connect with God through worship, salvation, baptism, and communion. We want to help you grow with others in the family of God through personal, relational, and intentional discipleship. This happens through discipleship coaching, life together groups, classes, and healing and support ministries. We are a community that values transparency. 
transparency, vulnerability, and relationships. In our shared connection with love for Christ, we go out into the greater community and the world to make real change. Will you join us? At the heart, we desire to see children and students develop lifelong faith through connecting in small groups, partnering with parents, and giving opportunities to serve others. To get connected, please stop by the Information Center in the lobby or visit us online at careheart.org. There's an event coming up at Your Heart that I'm really excited to tell you about. It is on Friday, February 9th. Pure Heart is hosting the Resilient Church Conference. And this really is multi-church. It's the whole community and all of us collaborating with professionals and Christian leaders. And they're teaching us about how to understand and serve those who are struggling with addiction, with mental illness, and with trauma. Dan Steffen is going to be one of the speakers. And if you know anybody in your life, your family, your friends, people you work with who struggle in any of these areas, if you're a leader at Pure Heart, Pure Heart's about loving everybody who's in struggle. So we really want to invite you to participate. To find out more, you can just go to pureheart.org and click on the banner that says the Resilient Church Conference. Then we're excited because on January 20th and 21st, we have baptisms coming up. So maybe, yeah, exactly. Maybe you just have been one of those people who's raised their hand to accept Christ in these last few weeks or months. Or maybe you're someone who knows the Lord, but you've never had that opportunity to share your faith through baptism. We would love to have you join us. To find out more about that and to sign up, go to the information saying before, a creature of habit. Anybody ever heard that before? You see, we are creatures of habit. Some of us are sitting in the same seats every single weekend. You're in the same, I'm not looking at anybody, but just the same seats. I can tell where you are because you sit in the, hey Lindsay, it's, like, but it's actually a different service, but good to see you guys over there, all right? It's good stuff. Well, you sit in the same seats. We shop at the same stores. Matter of fact, when we shop at those stores, we use the same pattern every time. We go down the same aisles every time. We buy the same things first and the same things last. Every single time we're creatures of habit. We eat the same things all the time. Every Sunday morning before I preach, I wrote it down. I eat an egg whites, spinach, and plant-based protein shake. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I don't. I don't, I don't do that. I, I guess some of you are like, seriously? <laughs> yeah, that's why I had to write it down. I couldn't even say it properly, all right? I have an egg good muffin. All right. But I'm going to name some food places. I'm going to name some food places. And I want you to play along Saturday night. I want you to yell out what you eat at these places all the time. So you ready? Can we play along? Give me a shot. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. All right, here we go. 
McDonald's. Yeah, you salad, you luck. Okay, Makayos. Chips, okay. Pollo fondido. Do you know what pollo fondido means? In Spanish, do you know what pollo fondido means in English? Will be served in heaven. All right, let's just keep on going. All right, how about plane jumper? Come on, the Widowmaker Burger. Think about that name for a second. All right, okay. Wildflower. Only women. Only women. It's only women. Are good. If a man shouted something out, you bring your man card to me after the service. All right. You just bring it up. You set it on the stage. I'll give it back to you in a month. Okay. That's how that's gonna go. All right. Listen. We we, we all know of someone, and we've said this before. Yep. That's just Jim. That's just the way he is. If your name is Jim, I just made that up right there. Was it anything specific towards you tonight? We all know someone like that. Or we have some people in our lives that we know exactly how they will respond in each and every situation. And you go, oh boy, I don't know how Cindy's going to respond, but I sure know, I sure know how Sally's going to respond. We all know of somebody that we just know how they're going to respond in each and every given situation. So if 2018 is going to be this year of transformation on our campus, I thought, wouldn't it be great for it to be a year of transformation for us? Yes. To see areas of our life that we have longed for to change, to see radical change through Christ in our lives this year. But if we're going to do that, we have to slow down long enough and we have to take a really, really good look over the next three weeks. At some of our habits. We're going to take a look at our spiritual habits. We're going to take a look at some of our emotional and mindsets and word habits that we have. And today we're going to talk about our physical habits. See if this resonates with you. We create our habits. And then your habits create you. Can we read that together? Ready? Go. We create our habits. And then our habits create us. Hey, have you ever heard the saying, you're just stuck in a rut? Did you know that actually in your brain, so we're going to talk more about this next week, there are patterns, there are grooves, there's neural pathways. Turn your neighbor and go, he's getting deep there. Neural pathways, but we have grooves in our brain, the same habitual patterns. That's why it takes 21 to 30 days to form new habits. We have to make new ruts, literally, in our brains. Half of Americans will make New Year's resolutions. How many of you made some kind of New Year's resolution this year? Raise your hand. Just be, just be bold, all right? Make New Year's resolutions. That means that one... 163 million people in this country will make some kind of commitment at the beginning of the year. But here's the problem. Only 9.2% of them feel like they're successful. Here's the other thing we know this to be true. Nearly 30% will fail within one week. So I'm like, it should be higher than that, all right? We just stop doing the things that we make commitments for. People who are in their 20s, when they set New Year's resolutions, they will reach them 70, I'm sorry, 37% of the time. 37% of the time. That's the ratio. That's what they'll make. But if you're in your 50s, it's 16% of the time you'll follow through with your New Year's resolution. Why is it as we get older and smarter, change becomes harder? What's the deal with that? I would submit to you, we just have developed even more and more bad habits and more and more ruts in our lives. And the ruts in our neurotransmitters have gotten deeper and deeper in our lives. And I love the fact that we're starting this series a couple weeks into the year. You know why? Because some of us are already frustrated that we've stopped doing the very things that we said we wanted to do. So I want to help you and I want to help me. I'm going to be teaching, I'm going to be preaching to me as much as you over the next three weeks. How many are excited about that tonight, all right? We're going to, we're going to help two people are excited about that. That's good. Last year, 2017, here were the top resolutions in 2017. Check this out. This is interesting. Top resolutions. Number one, lose weight, eat healthier, 21%. That was the top resolution that people had. They wanted to eat better and they wanted to lose weight. Self-improvements, 12.3%. Better money decisions, 8%. Quit smoking, 7%. Do more exciting things. <laughs> I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Do more exciting things, 6%. But I find this interesting. Before you go to the next slide, I find this interesting. 6.3% said do more exciting things. Did you know that came before this one? Spend more time with family. Isn't that interesting? I want to do more exciting things. Somebody said Amen. Okay, we'll just keep going. All right. Work out more. Yeah. Learn something new. Do more good deeds. And find the love 
of my life. How many have already done that? You guys are so smart. You know what? If you didn't raise your hand, it's going to be a long night if you're married. All right. <laughs> I'm going to need to go to our marriage class tomorrow, all right? Tomorrow morning. Get her early part and get up to that marriage class, okay? Here we go. So for the next three weeks, I want to look at one of my favorite moments in Scripture. We're going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Go there with me all over the room. Go there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Paul, at the end of his letters, the Apostle Paul, would often give final thoughts. So final words. There's something powerful about final words. They get more to the point. They highlight what matters most. And I want to encourage you, read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 this week. There's some great stuff, especially from verse 12 to the end of the chapter. Verse 12 to the end of the chapter. We are going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. Paul says some amazing things under the influence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he gets to verse 23, and this is what he writes. And I'm going to break this down for us a little bit this, this, this evening. He starts off, and this is what he says. May God himself. Everybody say that with me. May God himself. It's important to know right out of the gate, who's doing this? Who's doing this? This is God himself. This is going to be the theme for this series. And I love the fact that God desires to help me. Anybody else excited about that tonight? I love the fact that God wants to help me. That God himself is going to cause this to happen. Because some of you, let's be honest, some of you listening online and sitting here tonight, you may have grown up in a home where your father didn't want to help. Or your mother didn't want to help. Or leaders in your life didn't want to help. But God himself, God desires to help me. He wants to empower me. He wants to help transform my life. And besides that, we all know of a person in our lives that they just keep messing up. And if we're real honest tonight, there's a part of us in our, in our human, in our, in our flesh, we're just like, I'm tired of trying to help you. Aren't you glad that God never wearies from his desire to change us? Can I get a yes from anybody in the room tonight? Because I know I do. I get, I get tired. Two steps forward, two, three steps back, five steps forward, two steps back. You just get weary of that process sometimes. God the Father doesn't want to quit on us. And he goes on. He says this. May God himself, the God of... Peace. Say it again. Peace. peace. This process is going to involve peace. The emotion that we are going to experience in the journey of transformation should be peace. Now walk with me on this for a second. That, that, that means it shouldn't be about striving. How many of you know willpower doesn't work? Anybody? I get up in the morning, I will do it, and by noon I'm not doing it, okay? All right? Striving, guilt, shame, self-condemnation, fear, obligation, pride. No, no, no. It's peace is what we're going to experience. Because God himself. God of peace, and I love this next part, will sanctify you through and through. That's a big word, sanctify. Let me give you another big word, justification. Let's take a moment. Justification versus sanctification. Justification is my position in Jesus Christ. That when I gave my life to Jesus, I was justified in my Father's eyes. That when God the Father looks at me in my jacked up life, he sees the perfection of his son. Anybody else excited about that? I am justified in Christ. When I said, Jesus, I received what you did on the cross for my sin, then I was justified. That was washed away in my life. And my father in heaven sees his son in me. That means that I am his child. I'm no longer just his creation. I'm now his child. I'm an heir to all that belongs to my father God. I get heaven and not hell. Can I get an amen from anybody in the room tonight? That's justification, but, 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 and this is, this is, this is a big but, all right? Sanctification is a process. Everybody say process. This is a lifetime process. Justification happens in a moment when I say yes to Christ. Sanctification is a process. And contrary to what some of you might think about yourselves, you are not a piece of work. You're a work in process. Just turn to your neighbor right now and just smile at him a little bit and say, you may not like me now. Just say it. Come on, come on. Come on. All right, now say this. But just you wait and see. I am a work in process. 
God is doing something in my life day by day as I trust in Him and lean into Him. And now tune in. If you tune back, tune back in because here's where we're going to land tonight. And for the next couple of weeks, I love this verse. And then Paul writes these words. May your whole, everybody say whole. whole. Spirit, soul, and body. Let's read that together. Spirit, soul, and body. One more time. Spirit, soul, and body. Be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your whole spirit, soul, and body. This idea of whole means to be perfectly sound. Like being sound-minded. To be healed. To be whole. And we're going to start this series with the body. Because most Americans are dealing with resolutions that have to do with losing weight, exercising, being more healthy. So we're going to start and we're going to talk about that tonight. And then we're going to move next weekend towards the soul. We're going to talk about what we think. And we're going to think about what we think about. Because we don't always think about what we think about. All right? And then we're going to move towards the spirit because that's where the power is and that's where the real change comes. So we're going somewhere. You've got to stay with me for the next three weeks. Turn to your neighbor and say, stay with us for three weeks. All right? You've got to stay with us all three weeks. Okay? We're going somewhere. We're starting with the body. We're going to move to the mind. And then we're going to deal with the spirit. And we're going to have a great time together. We're going to talk about transformation and how we can truly be changed through the power of Christ. Because we all, we all, we all have an area of our life that God's still working out. In us. How many have some things that God just dealt with immediately when you came to Christ? Anybody? Just some things that just changed. How many have some things that just takes a little more time? Put both hands in the air. You may want to So, let's take a moment. Let's stand all across the room. I want you to greet 35 people and say, you're processing nicely. You're processing nicely. <laughs> go, family. Well, this is my man right here, Pastor Todd Chambers. Would you give Pastor Todd Chambers a big hand tonight? And uh, God brought Todd into my life, oh my goodness, how long has it been? Eight years? Seven years? Seven years ago? And uh, he was uh, running a business, running a fitness business, nutrition business, and uh, he came into my life, and then God called him into ministry. We uh, baptized him here, and God called him into ministry. You're almost done with Bible college, baby. You're almost done with being seminary. I'm proud of you. Give him a big hand for that. And serving full time in ministry. And God has just blessed our church. Most churches don't have the privilege of having someone with Todd's background. And I'm just going to be honest. I'm just going to dive right into these questions tonight. When I first brought you on our team, I had some people that were a little bit upset. Like, this whole nutrition thing, this whole exercise, that isn't spiritual. I did. I had some folks that were mad at me. It happens. <laughs> Week. Okay, and so there were some folks who were upset about it, and so I just want to ask this question, first question out of the box. Is it even biblical? Where in the Bible is it talk about exercise, nutrition, the body? No, we just read, you know, spirit, soul, body, but hey, what's your viewpoint of a Pastor Todd? Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, and I will tell you that uh, those same people came to me first, and I was like, uh, <laughs> I really wasn't saved yet, and I kind of wanted to go, hey, get out of here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You know, let's sanctified, just... Yeah, sanctified, You're working through that. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you were justified. There was no you bad listening idea. to the first part of my service. <laughs> Spirit, soul, body. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's actually throughout the entire Bible. Uh, but if you start at the very beginning when God just spoke to his people and he gave them 613 do's and don'ts, one third of those talk about food, what to eat. And the other two thirds are how to live. So let's just end it right there. God cared greatly about yeah. how his people yeah. ate. Eat this, don't eat that. No. Right? No. And then the second thing is, uh, you know, that, that scripture you put up there, 523, first this one is, uh, we are a spirit. I like how God put it. We are a spirit that possesses a soul, which is your mind, your will, and emotions, and we live in this, this house we call a body. And Paul talks about that all the way through when he... Uh, which, awesome. by the way, we get a new body in heaven. Yes. How many are excited about that? That's what's going on. So trade this one in. It's allergic to carbs. 
no comment. <laughs> um, yeah, he, ta he talks about it quite a bit, and he, uh, he basically says, I discipline my body like a boxer, and I make it do what it needs to do so that I can finish the race. In your 30 years of nutrition, you started when you were five, and you're in your years of nutrition and exercise. <laughs> Tell me, what do you see? What do you see? Uh, you know, I, uh, if I were to really throw something off the top of my head, I'd say I've seen that food is an incredible addiction. Uh, you don't know anything about that? Um, Was that to be hurtful or just yeah. <laughs> Come on, you got to work with me. I, it's my only time to get here. Because they got my back the whole time, all right? I want you to know that. Okay? Uh, and another thing that you, you could say is that diet and exercise actually works. Uh, but what I have really found to be the number one thing in 30 years is uh, best described in the story, because you and I have talked quite a bit about it. Uh, this uh, mother, a very concerned mother, came to me and said she wants me to talk to her daughter about her health and uh, lose, lose some weight. I said, sure. So I walk out of my office, I uh, walk out to her, and uh, here is this 22-year-old, beautiful woman, 22 years of age, but she was well over 400 pounds. And she was sitting on a piece of equipment. And uh, I actually could not see the equipment. And uh, I got about 10, 15 feet away from her. And she says, I don't effing want to see you. I don't effing want to talk to you. And I don't care what my effing mom said. And I said, well, we got a different problem. <laughs> uh, sorry. For me, F was faith. Come on. <laughs> I wasn't saved all the way yet. I'm still I'm a work in process. He, had, he hadn't been baptized yet, okay? <laughs> this is before I met him, all right? This is the problem. And um, if you're visiting tonight, please come back. <laughs> Sanctified. Touch your face. Well, if you can't have fun. We're going to be real. All right, yeah. We're going to be real. Right. Right. Oh, so okay. yeah, the, the Bible says they have to forgive us. So let's <laughs> Well, uh, you know, at that point, I, uh, she said in so many words that every 